From pre-production to premiere, Universal's first theme park in Florida was set to be something completely different from what was offered at other Orlando parks at the time. They would feature expanded versions of many of their studio tour favorites in California, but also use the park as an East Coast studio, intentionally designing the areas within the park to accommodate that purpose. Opening day lands like New York or San Francisco obviously convey this with their film set quality theming and hyper detailed design. But on the other side of the lagoon would be another area, not themed to a specific location and curiously named Expo Center. While this land didn't have the same thematic consistency of the lands I mentioned before, it was still fit for that movie set purpose, containing a variety of eclectic attractions that fit into the greater theme of the park. I mentioned movie sets and this land would house two, one for the 1990 USA TV series Swamp Thing and the other a recreation of the Bates Motel and Mansion used in Psycho 4 The Beginning. Expo Center would also house the initial location of the Hard Rock Cafe at Universal Orlando, a restaurant that is still very famous and popular to this day even though it has changed locations. And as far as opening day attractions go, you could visit some very talented furry friends at the Animal Actor stage or grab a back stage pass and join E.T. on an adventure to the green planet in E.T. Adventure. Expo Center on opening day was a grab bag of different experiences, ranging from attractions that sent you into the movies to the making of movies, acting as the catch-all land for experiences that didn't quite fit into the other areas. And this would become even more the case in the next couple years. After its extended delay, the beloved Back to the Future The Ride opened in the area near Animal Actors in May of 1991, and would take guests on a simulator journey back in time to protect the space-time continuum from Biff Tannen. Fievel's Playland would open a few months later in 1982 and would be located in the area surrounding E.T. Adventure. This children's playground would be based on an American tale in Fievel Goes West and would bring you down to the size of a mouse to play with oversized objects, which is pretty typical for the early 90s. Despite its more haphazard nature, Expo Center housed two of Universal Studios' biggest and best attractions and a bunch of experiences that made you feel like you were part of the movie-making action. However, as Universal was looking to expand the park to cater to certain demographics, Expo Center began morphing and changing into something new. It's not wrong to say in the early years that Universal Studios Florida didn't have many attractions aimed at small children. While many rides in their original lineup weren't the state-of-the-art intense roller coasters they have today, rides like Jaws, Confrontation, or Earthquake were a bit much for very young visitors. The majority of the child-oriented experiences at Universal, including Animal Actors, Fievel's Playland, and E.T. Adventure, were all located in Expo Center, and by the time the mid-90s rolled around, Universal was set on retooling this area to become their new kid-themed zone within the park. First came a day in the park with Barney in 1985, a live show and indoor playground that would feature the famous, or infamous, purple dinosaur and his many friends. However, unfortunately, this expansion would come at the expense of the Psycho set, with it being demolished about a year prior. And just a few years later, the rest of the surrounding area would get redone, utilizing the space occupied by the original Hard Rock Cafe to install two core fixtures of their upcoming children's themed area. However, the demolition only really impacted some of the paths surrounding the Hard Rock Cafe, as the building wouldn't be finally demolished until 2011, as the building was blocking the route needed to transport floats for the brand new Superstar Parade. Anyways, one of these fixtures would be a new playground this time themed to the Curious George books, and the other would be the park's first ever roller coaster, themed to Universal's cartoon mascot, Woody Woodpecker. With all these expansions and a more clear direction as to what was happening on this side of Expo Center, the name also changed, with E.T., Animal Actors, Barney, Fievel, and George all being located in Woody Woodpecker's Kid Zone, which opened officially in 1998. Now I've talked a lot about that side of the former Expo Center, but what about what lies beyond Animal Actors? While Back to the Future was safe, for now, there would be some changes coming to the opposite end of the land that would be very big in how we see the area today. Universal wanted to develop this back plot of land, previously used for Swamp Thing and housing the Back to the Future 3 locomotive, into a brand new attraction. The original IP set to take over this attraction were all over the place, from the works of Stephen King to Apollo 13 and even The Simpsons. However, the attraction eventually morphed into one based on the 1997 Sony film 
Men in Black. This ride would incorporate a new spinning dark ride system and bring you into MIB headquarters where you are unleashed onto the city and must defend it from alien invaders with laser guns attached to your vehicle. The whole process from conception to opening took about three years, and Men in Black Alien Attack opened in April of 2000. Like the recently opened Kid Zone, Men in Black was a fun new experience and a new style of dark ride for Universal, but also worked to re-theme the Expo Center area. Now dubbed World Expo, Alien Attack leaned into its mid-century aesthetics, utilizing theming similar to the 1964-65 World's Fair, which is quite important to the history of another little park down the road. That paired with the Institute of Future Technology theme for Back to the Future the Ride really brought the Expo to World Expo, acting as the futuristic corner of Universal. Universal Studios Florida and finally giving this land a proper theme. And right here, this seems like the perfect place for the story of Expo Center slash World Expo to end. Kid Zone is its own thing, World Expo is its own thing, they're both really well themed, it's great. But the story doesn't end here. See, Men in Black and Kid Zone are two primary examples of the direction that Universal was going in in the early 2000s. Those attractions delivered fun, well-themed experiences for sure, but were also meant to incorporate new IP into the park that was hot and relevant. As Universal had expanded their Florida project into a full-fledged vacation destination, they found a model of replacing their older attractions when they became less popular in exchange for new ones based on newer properties. And as we've seen, even their biggest attractions weren't safe for those rethemes. I briefly alluded to Universal wanting to incorporate the then mega popular Simpsons property into the park. Well, when it came time for Back to the Future the ride to close, which was declining in popularity by the mid 2000s, the Simpsons would finally get their ride in the park. The Simpsons ride would keep the same ride format and technology as Back to the Future, with major modifications obviously coming to the ride film and queue theming. Instead of an institute for future technology, you'd be traveling into the ethically questionable Krusty Land theme park, in which Sideshow Bob is looking for revenge against the Simpsons, and you're quite literally along for the ride. After the ride opened in 2007, the futuristic feel of World Expo would be essentially cut in half, and that would only become more true as the surrounding shopping and dining area between the Simpsons ride and Kid Zone would be transformed into the Springfield land, bringing many of the locations from the show to real life. While I enjoy Springfield and find it super true to the source material, it ate up a good chunk of what we had left with World Expo after the construction of Kid Zone, and two themed lands later, World Expo is relegated to one single attraction. Well, I guess one single attraction and a theater show, as Fear Factor Live, which replaced the Wild Wild West stunt show, was relocated to World Expo once Amity Island closed to be replaced by Diagon Alley. So that essentially brings us up to today. Where are we now with World Expo and where are we going? Well, in 2020, due to the global pandemic, Fear Factor Live, after years of closure rumors, would finally close down, and three years later, there are still no signs of it being demolished or rethemed in any capacity. Expansion to the Wizarding World had been proposed, but the building still just sits empty, except during Halloween Horror Nights, where it's currently being used to house the Halloween Nightmare Fuel live show. Also in 2020, a day in the park with Barney would close and be replaced with a temporary DreamWorks themed overlay in 2021 named the DreamWorks Destination. And most recently in early 2023, we got the full scale closure of much of Kid Zone, including DreamWorks Destination, Bible's Playland, Woody Woodpecker's Nuthouse Coaster, and Curious George Goes to Town. It's said there will be some form of DreamWorks themed overlay to the area with all the playgrounds completely leveled and really only the Nuthouse Coaster and Barney Theater left. And with rumors of the Simpsons property being removed from both American Universal Parks in the near future, the fate of that area is also unsure. So that really just leaves Men in Black Alien Attack as the last remaining piece of World Expo. And luckily, Universal has been ensuring that Men in Black is solid where it is, not planning on closing its doors anytime soon. And and I think that's a good thing to hear. It's a unique ride within the park today, and its aesthetics stand out amongst everything else at Universal Studios Florida. However, at this point, all signs point to World Expo as a themed land being a thing of the past. It's sad to see such a large opening day land with so much history and personality whittled away into one tiny corner of the park. While it did spend most of its days as a giant casual area, it has given us some classic attractions like Back to the Future The Ride and the Psycho Sets as well as E.T. Adventure, but that one's also still open. 
World Expo or Expo Center is a land so important to the history of Universal Studios Florida, it is so often overlooked compared to the others. In the same fashion that Lost Continent has become an island of adventure. The future is very, very uncertain, and unfortunately, I don't think it's going to become a full-fledged land ever again. But it's still fun to look back at it and look at the history it's left, look at the legacy it's left, and recognize this unique and interesting part of Universal Studios Florida. Let me know your thoughts in the comments about World Expo. Take care, everybody.